what is the spirit to learn second is the subject to learn third is the support to learn and fourth is success for your learning so you must start with the spirit then expand towards the subject then blossom with a support then it will end it must culminate in a success and four things are essential and spirit is the basic thing this spirit can be used from anything from your mother from your father from your master from your risk from your challenges from your hardships from your suppressions anything may produce anything may induce your spirit for lot of people they are learning that from their depressions lot of people become vehement and potential by their failures so depending upon the people's natural proclivity they may learn from anything there are lot of people who have not learned from masters but learned well from fate so innumerable teachers are there innumerable inducers are there so what is the spirit and what is the motivation of spirit motivation of the spirit in education it induces the person to know to do and to achieve that is motivation of spirit to know to do and achieve what is achievement achievement is not only success it is the capability of continuing your effort even in the case of failure that is known as achievement that type of achievement that requires courage and uh, achievement uh, oriented things uh, based on just uh, triumphant values they are useless more than that in spite of defeat incessant charge and diminishing charge of a person so bigger and commitment to reach in spite of the failure is one of the achievement so we want to clearly define that education is not a process to make you study make you know it is not a process to make you to do it is not a process to struggle with you to get into achievement it is not a process to make you know or to make you do or to struggle and support and suffocate with you for your achievement but it is a process of motivation of your already existing spirit then there are three systems of education one is motivation of spirit second thing is induction of awareness third thing is response whatever we are teaching in the school now it is only response for the instruction so teachers can induce response preachers can induce awareness preachers can only induce motivation of spirits like ramanuja bhajaya and acharya they can induce motivation of spirit and the preachers those who have some commitment and values without any spiritual zeal or special prowess they can induce your awareness other people they can induce only your response have you understood yes i have understood this is what instruction response that is the inferior education mediocre education is awareness superior education is motivation spirit which is uh, fortunately or unfortunately not available anywhere except in stories so this is real education then there comes the yeah, question if this education is imparted we need four things where is the ideal institution where are the ideals who is the ideal master and where are the ideal students there must be a question for that if you want any product either you must have an online trading or you can import from any other foreign country you can purchase by order or you can just uh, ask somebody to create that there will be some possibility for purchase of any community like this the ideals are they are purchasable the answer is ideals ideal institutions ideal students and ideal masters among these four things only an ideal master he can create everything ideal master it is available he can create ideals he can create ideal students he can idealize the students whether they are ideal or not so an ideal master is very much required for this time and this ideal master what he will do he will guide you with morality morality is there are somebody has been there are so many people who are honest but they are suffering they are being threatened then that is honest morality is potential morality is not only having honesty but also a potential fortification of your honesty so that all other evil forces are bombarded when they cross or touch you what is morality morality is not lack of opportunity to do wrong things it is not also physical incapability or opportunistic incapability or environmental incapability to do wrong things but it is the mental incapability having not the mind to do things in spite of opportunities in spite of our benefits or in spite of our uh, various other coercive forces environmental conditions so that is known as morality so two explanations for morality morality is having inbuilt potential second thing it is just the mental refusal or uh, it is a power of mental incapability 
where the mind does not cooperate in spite of the benefit, favor, development and various other things that are there. By doing that and by not doing there may be a trap, there may be a torture, there may be a tension, there may be a turmoil, whatever it may be. That type of capability of having the fullest potential restraint in dharma, in the principles against the various other malicious instincts that is known as morality. These people they are capable of doing three things. One is morality inspiration, morality courage and morality determination. These three things must be done at the impressionable age. If you just teach ease of fables and various other Panchatantra stories, that is morality inspiration that will not be uh, transformed into courage and that will not become determination. What is determination? Till the person dies, that morality gives him four comforts. One is comfort to behave with morality, comfort to correct other persons to morality, third is protest against immorality and triumph against immorality. All of these three things are, the four things are there, very much essential with the determination of morality. Determination and courage can be instilled only by a spiritual transmission or by a divine intervention, not by telling stories. Those things are instillation. So for making all of these things, we want three forces. One is the inner force, second is the outer force, third is the innermost force. The innermost force is known as Anugraha. The inner force is known as Achara. The outer force is known as Acharya. These three forces are very much essential. And this triad is going to mold you it is going to structureize you in the pathway of not only morality, installation by stories, by experiences and depictions and narrations, but also gives you the courage by which you follow and also the determination by which you flourish and immorality perish. That is the greatness of this spiritual way of wisdom. And we have to create an institution. Everybody is saying that we have to do, we have to do. We must immediately create an institution with these methodologies. Otherwise, immediately we are going to be victimized by professional rascaldom of the society, the functional disability and abnormality of the society. There are only two options. If you are not participating in this program, either you will be victimized or you are going to leave your son or daughter as a victim for these abnormalities. Because till they have been assassinated or till they have been bombarded, do the people, those who have been bombarded in bomb explosions, are the people assassinated by terrorists? Do they know about uh, terrorism or counter terrorism? When they actively participating in such programs, the commonalities are the civilian people, those who are accidentally subjected to, victimized by these bomb explosions and other uh, terrorist disruptive activities, did they pay for proper attention in learning all of these things? Could they have at least imagined that they would be subjected to such uh, circumstances? Because we must understand that anything may happen to any person on any time. So knowing that it is a global danger and you are a part and parcel of the global and anything may happen to you or to your dependents or your beloved beings, we must take an initiative to establish an institution with two students or three students or you yourself sit before the mirror, teach or learn or do something. So it must be done. We are there to cooperate and somebody must give hands for institutionalization of these concepts. Then next we are coming to economy. Economy is a study of resources. It starts with the monetary scale, fiscal scale, financial scale, then policy scale, then eco reserve scale, depending upon the person to whom it refers, starting from a micro level economics to macro economics. So this is known as ecology. There are three economic resources as per the Shastras. The primary sources are known as Bhaumika. Second source are known as Prakritika. Third things are known as Bhaudhika. These things are there in Shastras. And there are different types of interpretations for this thing also. So the first resource is water, earth, minerals, fire and various other natural components. The second thing is physical, mental, collective, intellectual, instrumental, scientific and technological. All of these resources. The third thing is global resources by which mutual resources between nations, transnational resources, federal resources, and global resources. So there are three types of understanding the resources and each and every country must have resources evaluation or assessment and management. How it is managed by two methodologies. What is our country's nature? How much we can produce on which base? Second thing, what is the composite structure of the manpower? How we can bring these people? So what is the availability and what is the possibility in development? Third 